smells good. Oh, hello there. I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Toilet Talk, where I help you build a better relationship with your porcelain crapper. Now, before we get too far into things, I've got a question here for my friend Kathy. Dear Abby, my neighbor told me that ever since she started drinking kombucha, her bowel movements have been on fleek. And she says it's all because of the probiotics. Everywhere I turn, I see pro this, pre that, biotic this, and TV belly dancers are telling me that I need more in my diet. I'm tired of pretending like I know what this means. I have to admit, my toilet game could use some improvement. And if I can change anything in my diet to help me out, I'm on board. Well, Kathy, we've all been there, and you know I am your go-to toilet guru. But before you go and buy a buttload of kombucha and sing kumbaya with your buddies, let's talk. So first of all, what the heck are probiotics? Well, our gut houses a wide range of bacteria, and a large proportion of these bacteria are what we considered good bacteria, aka probiotics. And these good probiotic bacteria are really important for maintaining overall good health. And so there's a lot of great research out there to support probiotics, and here are some of the great ways that probiotics are important for your health. Early research suggests that probiotics may play a role in everything from reducing the risk of irritable bowel disease, uh, lactose intolerance, headaches, anxiety, depression, and promoting heart health, bone health, immunity, regularity, and blood sugar control. We're really just scratching the surface trying to understand all the amazing ways that probiotics play a role in promoting health. So I'm personally always just trying to stay on top of all the research. So where do we find probiotics? Well, naturally we wanna look for fermented foods. So fermentation is the process where we convert sugars into gases, acids, and alcohols as a way to preserve foods. So in the process, we get a whole range of beneficial enzymes and probiotics coming out of that. So some of my favorite examples of fermented foods are things like yogurt, tofu, sauerkraut, pickles, wine, beer, and Kathy, your neighbor's favorite, kombucha. Now, keep in mind that all foods have calories and things like beer and wine, of course, should be enjoyed in moderation, but try to get your probiotics from a nice wide range of foods so that you really can complement your overall diet and fit them nicely into your day. So then what about prebiotics? Because I know they sound similar, but they're not. Prebiotics set the stage for gut health. They're actually part of certain foods that we don't actually digest. So they feed the gut bacteria and help them actually do their job. So some of my favorite examples of sources of prebiotics are foods like bananas, onions, leeks, garlic, soybeans, asparagus, sunchokes, artichokes, and chicory root. So when you think about prebiotics and probiotics, you want to think of them as a team, like Batman and Robin, or Bonnie and Clyde, or Jay-Z and Beyonce, though Beyonce is pretty much rocking her own team. But you know what I'm saying. Let's think about this. Prebiotics are the trusty sidekick that make probiotics all the more badass and make your gut a rock star. So next time you're grabbing some yogurt, add some banana in there for a little prebiotic action to get the party started. You'll be in good shape. So Kathy, I hope you're no longer confused and definitely, more importantly, no longer constipated now that you've got some ideas on how to incorporate prebiotic and probiotic foods into your diet. Now for the rest of you guys, if you love this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with some of your burning toilet talk questions. And of course, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen.